Welcome to Orchard Park Presbyterian Church. Come on in. We're glad you're here. Please join me in the call to worship. Our Creator spins the planets and sings the stars to shine. We praise you, God, for all of creation glistens with your glory. There is so much that summons us to marvel. Open your senses and let God fill your hearts. We listen, see, and perceive you, God in the beauty and majesty that surrounds us. God calls us to be co-creators, good stewards, and protectors of creation. Renew us now for your work, Holy One.
In Jesus Christ, we see that when we weep, God weeps. In Jesus Christ, God enters into the pain of the world in order to be with us in it, in order to redeem it and all things, trusting in the faithfulness of God. Please join me now for our prayer of lament and confession. Let us pray. Holy One, all creation glistens with your glory, and all creation groans at our indifference. We need so badly for you, gracious God, to help us hear it. Deepen our lament. Help us mourn like you do for what we've done to your earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all creation, we need to hear the groaning, but it is hard, for our hearts are as broken as this earth. We're so easily overwhelmed by what we should do, frozen by the enormity of all that is wrong, distracted by matters in our own life that consume us, We confess we have shrunk our hope to what we can see, forgetting that you are the God of all creation, that it is you who breathe life into us, you who create us and call us to create with you. Forgive us, God. Please take what is broken, our hearts, our priorities, this earth, and hold us, change us, love us into something new. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. Hear the words of Jesus. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forever and ever. In Jesus Christ, God means to make all things in heaven and on earth all of creation new, including us. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen.
And now let us express the peace of Christ to one another. The peace of Christ be with you. The peace, the peace of, of Christ, Christ be, be with you. And, and also with you. you. Good morning, boys and girls. I'm so glad to be here with you again, to be worshiping God together. Even though we're not face to face, God holds us together through his Holy Spirit. And I'd like to talk to you this morning about Jesus. Pastor Shelley is going to talk about Jesus by telling the story of the road to Emmaus, where two of Jesus' disciples on that first Easter were talking about Jesus. They were asking questions. They were asking hard questions about Jesus. And as they were walking, they found that Jesus was there with them. And did you know that every time that we get together and talk about Jesus, that God is there with us, that Jesus is walking alongside us, even if we don't realize it or recognize him right away, just as the disciples on the road to Emmaus didn't recognize him right away. And Jesus meets with every disciple, everyone who wants to talk to and about Jesus, the greatest of all disciples and most popular ones like Mary and Peter and John and those two on the road to Emmaus that no one really had heard of or knew about. It doesn't matter how big or small or popular or if no one knows who we are, God knows who we are and loves us and meets us when we meet to talk about him. And another way that we meet and talk about Jesus sometimes is at mealtimes. Uh, on that first Easter, the disciples had a special meal. And at that meal, as they were eating and breaking bread, they recognized that Jesus was right there with them. And I wonder if you, when you celebrated Easter at home with your family, did you have a special meal? And did you know that Jesus was right there with you when you were eating that Easter meal, just like he was there with the first disciples on that first Easter meal? One of the things that our family does at our meal times is we go around and we talk about one thing that we can thank God for. And then we also share one thing that we'd like to ask for God's help about, whether it's a thing or a person that we love that's going through a hard time. And I wonder if you can do that tonight and you can practice with your families uh, as you're gathering to eat, that you can talk to and about God by thinking and sharing one thing that you're thankful for and one thing that you can ask for God's help about. Whenever we get together and talk about Jesus, Jesus is right there with us to listen as we ask questions, to help us to understand him better, to help us to love each other better with words and with kind actions. Would you please pray with me? Let's fold our hands and close our eyes and let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you that even as we have been talking about you right now, that you are present with us. Lord, we pray that you would help us to understand you, help us to love you and each other better. Lord, we pray this in your name. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is from the Gospel of Luke. 24th chapter beginning with the 13th verse. Hear now the word of God to you today. Now that same day two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened and as they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along beside them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, 
Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem and do not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things? he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death. They crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all of this took place. In addition, some of the women amazed us. They went to the tomb early in the morning, but did not find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels, and they said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. He said to them, How foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he were going further. But they urged him strongly, stay with us. For it is nearly evening, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray together. Almighty God, you come to us on our journey. And you meet us where we are. And you take us where we need to go. And then you walk on ahead. And you wait for us around the corner. God of yesterday, today, and tomorrow, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing reverent and honorable in your sight. Amen. If I were to ask you to give me directions to Emmaus, you would not be able to tell me while pointing to a map. In fact, Scholars believe that there is no actual place called Emmaus. They have never been able to find Emmaus on historical maps. There's not any historical evidence that Emmaus was a town or a village that ever existed. But we have all been to Emmaus before. We have all met up on the road along the way. Theologian Barbara Brown Taylor calls the road to Emmaus the road of deep disappointment. And Emmaus is a place where you go in order to escape. It could be a bar or a movie, wherever it is that we throw up our hands and say, as Frederick Buechner describes, let the whole damn thing go to hang. It makes no difference anyway. Emmaus is whatever you do or wherever we go to make ourselves forget that the world holds nothing sacred, 
that even the wisest and bravest and loveliest decay and die, and even the noblest of ideas that man ever had, ideas about love and freedom and justice, have always in time been twisted out of shape by selfish men for selfish ends. When you feel that way, you just go to Emmaus. Emmaus is where you go when you find you aren't going to where you had hoped you thought you were going to go. Two men were on that road there today, and a terrible tragedy has struck, and life will never be the same, and the reality of the new day is so traumatic, it snowballs from bad news to awful news to oh my god news each one piling on top of the rest the news they are processing is that jesus has been crucified at the hands of their own people this means that disciples lives are now in danger this means he's not going to return this means things are here to stay this means things are going to get really bad and there is nobody who's going to come and save them and the person that they thought was going to come and save them is dead and buried but now his body is missing and this secondary trauma is the already traumatic experience of being alive in this time in history so they walk along this disappointing road and they talk and they talk out this trauma to verbalize what they are feeling, to make sense of a senseless act and the feeling of being out of control of it all. And on this road, a stranger shows up and inquires, what are you talking about? And they look at him incredulously. How could you not know what we are talking about? How could you not know what has happened? And they share this story and they say, and here's where you can really hear the pain. They say, we had hoped he was the Messiah. Inferring that that was not the case. What they had hoped for is now trash along the road. And they are so, so sad. They're so disappointed that they can't see straight. The first week of quarantine for our family was one disappointing road trip on the way to Emmaus. As we started realizing all of the things we had hoped would happen, had assumed would happen, and were now not going to happen. School had ended. A last day of school would never occur. Hanging out with friends wasn't going to happen. Prom wasn't going to happen. A senior art show wasn't going to happen. A new job wasn't going to happen. Major performances weren't going to happen. Baseball games weren't going to happen. Tournaments weren't going to happen. A high school graduation ceremony wasn't going to happen. And we would forget about one of those things and then all of a sudden it would come to us and we would remember that that too was going to be canceled. Oh no, not that one too. Some days we would just focus on what we had lost. All of us acting out in our shared and individual grief. But then something happened along the way. Easter came. Now the disciples didn't call Easter Easter. They called it the most traumatic, uncertain, terrifying day of their life. He was killed, buried, and now he's missing. It's like saying there's a pandemic, there's no resources, people are dying, and there's an economic crisis. 
And on that awful day, this man appears, hears their story, and begins to remind them of who they are and where they came from. And he does so by opening scripture. He says, don't you remember scripture? It's like saying, don't you remember your roots? Don't you remember what you're grounded in? Don't you remember what you learned? Don't you remember who you are? And the disciples start waking up. And now the day is about to come to an end. It's been a seven-mile walk to Emmaus. And the man appears to be going on down the road, and they invite him in to share a meal. And it is there that they notice his hands and his feet in the breaking of the bread. And their broken hearts burn with a feeling of wonder. And they recognize him. After bringing their attention to scripture, Barbara Brown Taylor points out how Jesus brings their attention to his hands and his feet. She points out how the hands and feet of Jesus had been important in his ministry. He used his hands to heal people. He broke bread and he traveled all around with good news. Now, she writes, they were wounded, all of them, the hands that had joined him to other people and the feet that had joined him to the earth. They had holes in them, sore, angry-looking bruises that hurt when they looked at. Only it is important for the disciples to look because they had never done it before. He wanted them to know that what he had gone through, that he had gone through danger not around it. When the world looks around for the risen Christ, when they want to know what that means to look for the risen Christ, they look at us. Not our pretty faces, not our sincere eyes. They look at our hands and they look at our feet for what we have done with them and what and where we have gone with them. And so it is for all of us. We are the hands and feet of Christ. The truth is, the church keeps being the truth. We keep being the hands and feet of Christ today, just like we were yesterday and just like we will go on tomorrow. We realize our purpose, we appreciate what matters, and we are reminded by Jesus that we are grounded in Scripture that assures us that all is not lost. Jesus brings us clarity and reveals himself in the sacred act of breaking bread. Now here's the other thing about this road. We all walk it. And some are walking it with greater challenges and disadvantages. We may all be in this together, but some of us carry heavier loads along this disappointing road. And it's up to those of us who walk along beside them to help them carry their load and invite them in the sharing of the breaking of the bread. On this road, there is no social distancing. There will never be social distancing on the road to Emmaus. Now, it's important that you don't get stuck on this road. That doesn't do you or anyone else any favors. Eventually, we may find our resting place. And when we get to Emmaus, you can always come in. You can always come to sit at a table and break bread and taste and be fed by grace. Grace is the thing that meets us where we are and takes us where we need to go. I was talking to a friend the other day about frustrations and stress and irritation, and she said so wisely, I think we all need to give each other a little grace right now. That reminder was a humble gift. 
Ah, yes, grace. What would happen if I gave people in my life a little more grace? What would happen if I gave myself a little more grace? Anne Lamont writes, grace is unearned love, the love that goes before, that greets us on the way. It helps you receive when you have no bright ideas left, when you are empty and desperate and have discovered your best thinking and your most charm, charming charm has failed you. Grace is the light or electricity or juice or breeze that takes you from that isolated place and puts you with others who are as startled and embarrassed and eventually grateful as you are to be there. And so after this encounter, these two disciples full of grace get up and they go back to Jerusalem back to the place they were escaping, back to reality. Because while things had drastically changed and things will never be the same again, they had work to do, a message to give and hope to offer. They had their hands and their feet they had scripture, and they had grace. You see, they weren't so empty-handed after all. Maybe they will meet you on the road. They may stop and ask you how you are doing, what is happening in your life, what's going on that brings you on this road. You may look at them incredulously and say, have you no clue what's going on? How long have you got? They will listen and nod, and they might open scripture before you and might remind you of scripture passages you have heard before but never took to heart. Like he will lift you up on eagle's wings he will run and not be weary. He will walk and not be faint. And then, sensing that you are hungry, they will pull from their bag some bread. And they will reach out their hands and you will notice that their hands are like your hands. They have known toil and they have known work. And you will look down at their feet and you can tell, like you, they too have walked many miles. They will meet you where you are, accept you in that moment, offer you some nourishment, and then they will disappear. And your heart will burn and you will be left standing on holy ground with all that you need for the journey. May God meet you where you are, take you where you need to go, bless you along the way, and wait for you around the corner. Amen.
mighty to save forever, author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave, Jesus conquered the God proclaimed with truth and grace. Let us now affirm what we believe in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we come to a time of prayer together this morning, let us remember all those in our church family with ongoing needs and concerns. Let us join our hearts and minds in prayer. Holy God, we pray that we may never take for granted the grace that you give to us. Keep us true to the way of prayer, to the reading of scripture, and to the practice of hospitality. We pray that as Christ appeared on the road to Emmaus, so he might appear to us and through us to others. As we share the joys and concerns we have, as we hear and speak your word, as we reach out to love our neighbors. Lord, hear our prayer. Today, we pray for those in our church and in our community who are troubled and upset, just as the disciples were on that first Easter day. We hold before you those who are experiencing the grief of losing what is important to them, a job, a home, a way of life, or a loved one. Grant that they may encounter the risen Christ and know that the future is safe in his hands. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who reach out in our church and in our community to share your healing presence with others. We pray for those who listen, for those who counsel, for those who share your word, for all those who care for the sick. May they ever more fully experience the love that they give to others. Lord, hear our prayer. Eternal God, use us as vessels of your love and hope and empower us to reflect your light to all the world. These things we pray in the name of our risen Savior, Christ Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you. 